Uh, we were gonna know what you're saying because of our first opponent. Oh yeah, the, the playbook's open. Um, this isn't go out and save anything. This is go out and and beat a, try to beat a, a really good opponent. So there will not be, we, we will run whatever we have to do to win the game. Um, you know, again, no disrespect to who we opened up with last year, but we want to keep some stuff back. This is, whatever feel, whatever we feel like we can do our best to win the game, we're going we're gonna to do. We're not going to let anything back. What's it like preparing for multiple quarterbacks? Maybe you could? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, who they play, we'll probably find out right before the kickoff. He's got three good ones. He's got Vedral, who has played a lot of football, seems like a great leader, tough, runs the offense really well. Um, he can run the ball, he can throw the ball. I respect how tough he is because I mean, he takes some shots and he, doesn't, he gets back up. I think he's a really good player. Um, the freshman, I mean, that guy, what you watch him do in, in the games he came in last year as a high school senior, um, to the spring game, the development he's had, I mean, that guy's a baller. He's big, he's fast, he's got good feet, he can sling it, I mean, that guy's gonna be a star. Um, and then Simon, the other guy, you watch him, he throws the ball really well, really, really accurate. Um, he has good presence in the pocket. So we've studied them all really hard. Um, I can kind of, you know, formulate an opinion who I think will play, but we're just going to prepare for their offense. They do a lot. We have to do what we do best, play fast, uh, be sound. Um, but we'll find out who the quarterback is when we get to the game. Uh, they lost uh, Isaiah Pacheco last year to the, or after last year to the draft and, and into the pros. But from a, just a running game standpoint and what he was able to do in both the run and the pass game, like, do you still see it in the system that you that you know they'll be able to plug? I, I do. Uh, that guy's a ball player. I mean, he's really good, and I saw him show up for the Chiefs. Uh, but their other backs are doing the same thing. They use him in the pass game. Um, they run him on the perimeter. They run him inside. But I have a ton of respect for him and all their backs. I think they're good players. Their defense took a step last year. Um, I know sometimes early in the week you haven't quite studied the defense yet, but what have you seen from that secondary in particular? Their secondary is good. I think they got all four back. Um, the two safeties, I think, are really ta talented guys. Um, Zero plays with his hair on fire. I think he's a tough kid. He reads the run well. He comes downhill. He puts his off the edge. I think two, two is the other safety. Um, very talented, very athletic. I think he played quarter at one point. I think both their corners are, are really talented. They got good size and length. They play with good technique. I mean, both, I think, have a chance to be NFL guys. So I think their secondary is very talented. Um, up front, they'll be better. Um, they got some guys coming back. 88's a big guy in the middle. Um, and then, you know, they, their linebacker situation, you know, they don't have a ton of experience there, but those guys will be real well coached and ready to play. Coach, we talked about how deep um, you are a receiver. Jacob Kraft, we don't really talk about him very much. What does he kind of provide, and does he have a chance to, to make an impact? Everybody has a chance to make an impact. Jacob Kraft made an impact today running our look team. I mean, that guy's probably been the scout team player of the week more than anybody that we've had. Um, so, it, you know, those guys today, I watched our scout teams. I spent time on both sides of the ball today. What I just watched in our run game and how hard our defense and offensive <coughs> line were going up against each other, I mean, it hadn't been like that. I mean, there were pads hitting. It was loud. There was no working together. They were getting after it. Those guys all deserve a ton of credit. I mean, everybody who steps on this practice field and gives everything they have, whether they play a game or not, it doesn't matter. They help us win the game. And that's Jacob Kraft. Uh, Jacob does everything right. Um, he, he knows our playbook inside and out. The guys go to him constantly. Um, he's like another coach out there. Um, but I can't tell you how much respect I have for that kid. And we'll eventually get on the field if he keeps working hard. Uh, but what he's doing right now is just as important as anybody else we have. And I love that guy and I appreciate him. Do you have a set five for the offensive line or you think you'll be shuffling guys in and out? We have a set five um, and then we have one or two guys we think we could rotate in. Um, you know, I really like watching that group. I like the way they work. You know, just none of them have, have really played yeah. much. Um, it's going to be the first start for a lot of them. It's going to be the first experience for a lot of them. It's going to be the first time they've all played together. The best thing I, I like about them is they just keep getting better. Okay. And that's, to me, that's the key. Is it? Is it gonna look perfect on Saturday with that group? No, it's not, and that's okay. It needs to look better the next week. It needs to look better in October. It needs to look better in November. And then we have some other young guys who are really coming along. I think the future is really bright on our own line. I'm excited to see that group play Saturday, and I'm excited to see how they develop over the season. Um, but I have, we have a set five right now that I feel good about going into the game. But there could be some guys rotating in and out.
Is there a kind of collective chip on their shoulders, uh, something to prove? With the O-line? Yeah. There better be. I okay. mean, everybody's kind of counting them out. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'd be disappointed if there wasn't. Uh, when you were at Pitt and even when you were at Rutgers, I think they were still in the big, I don't think you were with them in the AAC, no, right? No, just, just in the Big just, East. Just in the Big East. Um, to think that this is a game, you know, ACC versus Big Ten with Rutgers, uh, did you kind of see that develop, how did you kind of see that develop when you were at Pitt with the strength of the Big East and then as things kind of broke out with, with all these different schools going to different places that now they're in that, those power conferences and I know the Big East was still technically a, a power conference. I mean, at the time, Big East was a power conference. You had teams in the top 10. When I was at Pitt, we were a top 10 team. Uh, top 15 team, then a top 20 team. Um, you know, then I left and went to the NFL and I kind of faded away from it a little bit. And then that's when Rutgers went to the Big Ten and Boston College went to the ACC. I don't, I don't, I don't think too much into that. You know me. Just yeah. they put them on the schedule as the first team we play and we go do the best we can. I know you don't treat one game different than the other, but it's week one. And what have you learned most about week one in your few years as head coach here? Well, my first year was like September 23rd was week one. Um, that was a wild one. I'm not, this is, I don't know. I mean, you got to be ready to play. Week one for me is we just finished camp, right? Our fundamentals, our technique. <coughs> what we ran at camp, we need to run during these games. Um, there's too many teams week one who beat themselves. You know, they don't get lined up and they go from first and 10 to first and 15 because they have a false start. They jump off sides, now it's first and five. It's third and two and you go backward, now it's third and seven. You're substitution error, so you have 12 guys on the field, you get a delay a game. Ball carriers haven't been hit, they fumble the ball. Um, you see different things and you don't know what you're gonna get. New offensive scheme, new defensive coordinator on the other side, right? You just, you just gotta, you gotta do what you do best. Put a great fundamentals and technique. Let it rip. We haven't asked you much about Pat Carr. I was almost taken for granted because he's so reliable. Just, is he one of the more reliable players you've ever coached? I, I think know. everyone takes Pat for granted. He's a thousand yard rusher. No one talks about him. And I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. And I would if I were him too. He's had the best camp that he's had. His body looks better than it has had. Um, he's a leader. And I can't wait to see the kid play this year. He deserves it. He's. He's an incredible person and a really good football player. Do you have the message uh, to the students? Not yet. I'll give it to them tomorrow. I see him out there getting, getting ready. I'm excited to get him in the stadium. Uh, I talked to the freshmen on, uh, I don't know what day it was. So hopefully the freshmen get in. We'll give them a message tomorrow. Is there a tradition or something with the guys this week, the night before the first game, that you'll you'll do? I mean, it's last night before the season. I mean, the season started technically for you guys back with tra training. You're stuff. saying this Friday? This Friday, like the day, night before the game, is there something that you'll What's do? What's our tradition? Them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's we get to the hotel, and I want everybody to hang out together and be loose. Um, I don't bring in projectors, and we don't continue to watch. We, we watch our film in the morning. We practice, we review it, and when we get to that hotel, it's, we're together. If there's a Friday night game on, we'll eat, sit together, play games. I want them to be loose. The work, I mean, man, we worked hard. If we work hard Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I mean, we gotta wake up and go and be fearless on Saturday. I don't want a bunch of guys tight. I don't want them <coughs> overthinking things. I don't want coaches tight. I don't want to have them overthinking things. Um, but it's a neat time because it's just us, and we spend it together, and we eat together and we watch film together. And then they bring out the ice cream and we eat more. And it's one of my favorite nights of the week because you're pretty exhausted, but you know you put in everything that you had. And then your reward is getting a chance to go play on Saturday. So Fridays are pretty special, but that's kind of how I do things. I've been places where I continue to watch film until nine at night, 10 at night, and just this works better with this team. And not saying it's right or wrong, but that's, that's who our team is. You still have the same routine on Tuesday, Wednesday of practice? Like, what do you do Tuesdays? Tuesday today? Yeah. yeah, very similar to what we talked about last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today is more of a first and second down run day, but we're ahead since we had some bonus work. So today we mixed in some third down too. But normally, Tuesday's first, second down. We're still going to go good on good because I want to get yeah. speed on speed like I talked about. Tomorrow we'll hit third down and some red zone. And then Thursday is kind of a combination of everything. And then Friday we just do a big walkthrough, go over situations, and get ready to play. Right. That's, That's it. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.